It's 12th May 2020, 2020. We are at our church board meeting right now. And I'm going to share something with the board which I want to record and pass it on to the whole nation and the nations to hear this. On Monday morning, that was yesterday, which is the 11th morning, I had one of my most horrible dreams that I ever had in my life. It was the worst dream I ever had in my life. I, I woke up at 2.45, could not sleep in the morning. I went to my normal place of prayer, sat down there. I was praying and praying in tongues and praying in tongues and feeling a heaviness in my chest, really heavy about the people and the nation, nations. As I was praying, after about one hour of prayer, I didn't realize I had fallen asleep on the couch. But there was a purpose for me falling asleep. I had a horrible dream at that moment. In the 10 minutes of sleep, I had a horrible dream. And in the dream, I was, this has not happened to me before, it's the first time. I was at a very tall place, I climbed a tall place. Interesting enough, it seemed like a church building and at the right at the top of the church. I was right at the top, but feeling very lonely, feeling very isolated, feeling very uh, vulnerable, feeling that everything is gone away. And in this dream, remember it's a dream, I'm sharing a dream with you. I was feeling very, very down. And uh, Satan was telling me, jump off this. Jump off this building now. And you will be in a good place after that. Why should you go through the suffering? Just jump off this building. Just jump off this building. And I kept hearing this voice over and over again. Jump off this building. Jump off this building. And you'll be okay. Your sorrows will be forgotten. Your sadness will be gone. Your loneliness will be gone. Immediately at once, I woke up. And the Lord started speaking to me. The Lord spoke to me about when he went to the Jordan River and he got baptized. When the Holy Spirit came upon him, the Word of God says the Spirit led him to the wilderness for 40 days to be tested. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness for 40 days to be tested. And one of the first temptations, one of the three, or the, one of the three temptations Satan brought was, he took Jesus up on temple, on the temp top of the temple, the highest point there, on Temple Mount, where there's Al Haqsa Mosque right now, by the way. Took him up on the temple. The top what did he say? He said, Jump. Mm. Actually Satan was telling Jesus to commit suicide. Mm. But he was very subtle. Then he said, Angels will hold you down when you fall. So think of Jesus, 40 days he has been fasting and he would have been very weary, he would have been very feeling isolated, he was all by himself. And in his lonely place, in his hunger, in his frustration, Satan took him up the mountain, took him up to the temple top and told him jump. Jesus responded using the word. Mind you, Satan also used the word of God to tempt Jesus. Satan said something about, uh, hasn't he said that he'll send his angels to protect you? So he was using scripture. Mm. And at that point I realized, the burden came upon me that there are a lot of people who are going to come out of this crisis, the COVID-19 crisis, this is not just uh, people who are Mr. Johnny's and just, just nobodies who are in homes. No, no. Company CEOs, company directors, high class society people, members of parliament. The Lord showed me that many of them are in the place of jumping off the cliff, meaning about to fall into commit suicide because they are so frustrated. They seems to be like betrayed in an indirect sense. The word of God says, when you come close today, Jesus is coming. 
your own very own you reject you the word of god says if you are to follow me you have to take up my cross and follow me but hate your one one transition says hate your life for go of your children your brother your sister your father your mother because all of them will turn against you you will be all alone and this crisis you noticed where on earth did the government get authority to tell the family what to do and what not to do hmm. it was in the name of social justice or, or good good things that they could do for the people keep protect people but sadness used a tactic to make the government control the family control the church and here it is a dangerous situation when antichrist comes mm. satan is not going to come and show himself as satan there's going to be every valid reason said we need to control the population because there's something's really needed here people we really, need to help society that's how subtle satan is going to come in and tell you if you don't fall in line we are going to police you Where on earth did the government get the authority to come into the family home and arrest people? If your son came to see you on Mother's Day, if your daughter came to see you on Mother's Day, they could have been arrested and fined. This is terrible. So we had a very important time to realize that the church has to play a major role. I am ashamed as a pastor to say that we had to shut the church down and we had the guts to come out and do something about it. I'm ashamed to say that I am a pastor that I couldn't come out and do something. But I'm crying inside, saying, "Lord, help us to rise up. Help us not to give in to this nonsense." Some of you might not agree with me or disagree with me. I don't care if you agree or disagree. It's not. It's not matter. It doesn't bother me anymore. Because I've been in places like this. I've been in Saudi Arabia, and the law of the country said you cannot worship any other god. When the law of the country tells you something, do against the law of the Bible. That's when you got to put your foot down and stand your ground and say, "Sorry, we have to meet in church." Think of this: if the hospitals can be open, patients can go to hospital and get the doctors and the nurses can be willing to come and help. Thank God for the doctors and nurses who are willing to go and risk themselves. Church is in a sense another hospital. Church, in the, the hospital can give you medical medical advice, medical treatment. Church gives you spiritual resources, spiritual treatment, spiritual health, and the church has been isolated from meeting and pulled apart right now. Church, we are the ones who are supposed to counsel people. We are the ones who are supposed to give hope to people. Right now, someone told me recently, the teaching programs from schools to children, students. I don't know how far this is true, but if it's true, it's terrible. Most programs are just computer generated, and they're running the programs. with one or two teachers looking after the thing but there's one particular program which is supposed to be monitored by a teacher particularly and there is a safe school program now if this is true it's terrible so satan is trying to bring his agenda through very cunning and subtle ways and i'm challenging the church the next time a crisis like this comes we cannot bow down to the government and listen to them to say not to come to church who on earth Who the hell gave the government the power to tell us what to do and what not to do in the church and in our home? Church is a place of worship. We are come to worship the Lord. Home is a place of sanctuary where the family should meet. Do you know how many people are suicidal right now? I've had several people call me saying their cousins, their relations are committing suicide. Several people call me saying they are suicidal. Please help us. We don't know what to do. I've been on the phone talking and counseling people like crazy, but I feel so bad that I couldn't go and give them a hug and say we love you. because immediately it's your breaking the law this is nonsense i watched the protest in the city i know it was social isolation but when you, people who went for the protest told me this personally they said we were at the protest they showed me videos and videos the social distancing maintained in the protest it's only when the police went and arrested the guy who was reading the scriptures from revelation about the mark of the antichrist the beast the people started pulling back and there was a uh, break of social social isolation was broken at that point but that the police initiated the process arresting people the mother and the four year old child they pulled the child away from the mother and put the mother in the petty what do you call it the uh, the police car i know what happened to the child agree or don't agree with the protest but the fact is 
this is a start of the government getting involved in our personal lives. We've got to protect our nation, that's true. But there's so much you can go and I'm standing up right now and saying, we as families should not be told what to do and what not to do. We, I understand I'm trying to find the part of the constitution which states that the government has no right to do that. The government can't advise the people to isolate themselves. But they cannot force people to do that. So my challenge is right now, as the church, we need to stand up. This is the time the Antichrist is going to come. When Antichrist comes, they will bring every good reason to say this is for the people's benefit. It's for the sake of the people, they're going to protect them. You've got to take this mark, 666. Microchip in your hand or your forehead. If you don't take it, you'll be, you'll be contaminating the community. You could be having COVID-19. You'll be having COVID-20, you'll have COVID-21. Who, who knows what will come up next? Do not take do not take that chip because that's danger. So I'm just challenging this morning. Say, get ready for betrayal, get ready for rejection, get ready for isolation, get ready for when your own family not able to come and see you or not wanting to see you because they're scared. Say when your son, your daughter comes up to your doorstep, leaves a present for the mother at the door and then goes off. What nonsense is this? How sad is that? I'm, I'm really, really sad to see this. We as shepherds in the church across the nation, we have not done our part this time. The government has controlled, manipulated us. I know it, there's every good reason given, but the reasons given should be advice, but not compulsory rules which are going to get punished. It's time for us to stand up for what is right in the sight of God, do us right in the sight of God, because we are in the last days. We are coming close to the coming of Jesus. And Satan will come as an angel of light. We can't let that happen. Thank God that our Prime Minister is born again, Scott Morrison. Pray for this man that he will have wisdom to stand up and do what's right. Our Premier for the state of Victoria, Daniel Andrews, is a socialist left extremist. Left extremist. That man does hate that man hates people going to church. He's all for safe school program. He's telling us we can't. Everything else has been lifted. Restrictions have been lifted slowly. But church? Only ten people can come and meet in church? What nonsense is this? There has to be some level of standing up right now. God help us. Jesus, please forgive us. For oh, we as shepherds thought we have failed you. We have let the flock live by themselves. I know that you protected them and you looked after them. But Lord, they needed people to talk to them. I know how many people I spoke to on the phone. At 12.30 at night, 11.30 at night, my phone rings. And people are just, just desperate. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for healing. I pray that the spirit of suicide will be crushed. Father, the best time came in your life after that three temptations that the devil brought you. Your word says after, after three temptations, the devil left you and the angels came and ministered to you. I invite angels of God to come and minister to the people right now across the world. As the 40 days or 50 days or whatever, which is over now of quarantine or self-isolation. Self slowly people come back that there will be a presence of God will be in the pangs amongst the people. Angels of the Lord come and help the people. Remove un ungodly leaders. Lord, expose the God leaders who are using this to exploit their own ways to control, manipulate. They have seen a way now how they could control the population. Help the righteous leaders to stand up and do justice to the people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.